Hey, good morning, afternoon, evening, you guys. Sorry we had a little false start there. I had to press a little button that I didn't remember. So there it is. And uh, hope you guys are doing well. Okay. We're having a bit of spring here. I don't know what your weather is like. I'm sure in Chicago land, it's a lot colder than it is here. Hi, Amy. And Yvette and uh, Bob Mold. Bulb Mode Bill, <laughs> Jared, great to have you guys with us. We're going to we're gonna have some fun here. I hope everybody is doing well and staying healthy. Stay well, stay healthy. This is really important. Okay, well, let's get started here. Jared, you're there, right? We're all good? I am here. Oh, okay, great. Well, listen. You guys know me, but I'm Mark Silber. I'm an author, photographer in Carmel, California, right near where Ansel Adams lived. Um, and the show is brought to you by our friends at Bay Photo. They've got some specials here that are really cool. So 25% off on fine art canvas wraps. You can see how these wrap around. That's kind of cool. That's 25% off. This I'm really excited about. 40% off on large Prints, 40% off. Look at that, you guys. Get a big print made and you get 40% off. There's your coupon code right there. Okay. Buy yourself a, 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 a really, take your best photograph, make a big print out of it. 40% off when you buy two or more. Okay, so you got to get two of them. 25% off on your first order. We love Bay Photo. They are awesome. Their customer service is incredible. They'll do whatever you want in the way of printing. So don't forget about them. Okay. So, you know, we start the show with uh, usually I go over a couple of ideas. Oh, uh, one thing we should make sure that people who are watching don't forget <laughs> to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you, Jared. <laughs> we don't want to forget that. All right. Well, let me show you. Uh, today we're going to talk about self-portraits. Long before they were called selfies, they were self-portraits. This is one from my moody high school days. And I took it with this Rolleiflex right here. See that Rolleiflex? Put it on a tripod. And uh, this was shot in my senior year of high school. That's kind of my mood right there. I, w I wasn't like the happiest camper at that point. And I wrote the whole story in this book about escaping high school and going to Mexico. And this was very soon before that uh, excursion to Mexico. And I was, I captured my actual mood there, which was, hmm, <laughs> a moody kid in high school. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, I, I actually kind of like that portrait and I think that it's I think it's important when you're doing a selfie to kind of think about well what what mood what mood am I trying to capture here what do I want to express so in that case that was what the way I really felt jumping ahead many years this is a oh not that far let's go back here yeah uh next one um uh, I use this as an illustration for something I think one of the one of my classes, um, video classes. Uh, I studied all the Ansel Adams books, re-studied him, I should say. I studied him when I was originally in high school. Um, and I here I am studying and taking notes. That was an illustration I shot over my shoulder, as you can see. It had a purpose. Oh, come on, Mark, where is that? There we go. This was many years later. I really don't actually like this one. Um, but I use this as an illustration for my AYP book. I, you know, I struggled with this. I wanted to get something that I, I thought, you know, showed me as a photographer or whatever. That is the view out of my back uh, porch. So that's a, that's, a, that's a real view there. But I'm not crazy about the expression there. I don't, I don't know. I'm not happy with that. I, I'm, it's okay. It has its purpose, but it's not one of my favorites. And then I do like this one. This was shot really close to my house. We have, uh, 
In California, we have a whole series of missions. This is the Carmel Mission that was established in 1771. Think about that. Five years before this un these United States were established, that mission was built. Um, I shot that with an iPhone on a uh, ear earbuds. You know, there's a cool thing you can do with an iPhone is you can use the controller of your earbuds to capture your photograph. So you can see this arm here that's extended out, isn't holding the camera, I actually prop the camera up, but I press the shutter. And I, I'm, I'm happy with that one. I thought, it, you know, another moody kind of picture. Many years later, I wasn't particularly moody, but I was, I was contemplating, you know, let's put it that way, I was being contemplative. And then this, this is one I've used, you guys have seen. This is another iPhone photograph in uh, Big Sur, California. I mean, uh, you know, that's not the highest quality portraiture. There's a lot of shadows. It was taken in midday. But I think it works really well. And uh, I've actually used it a lot on my social media. The, I thought the blue in my shirt and the blue in the sky. And that's actually this hat. That's kind of when I started adopting this hat as my official AYP hat. And one of these days, I actually tracked down the manufacturer of this. This hat, believe it or not, was designed by Carlos Santana, the, the, the great foot guitar player, designed this hat. <laughs> and they're for sale. I just need to, you know, find some time. We'll put it into our store. Anyway, I, I wanted to go over those just to remind everybody, hey, this would be a good time to do a portraiture project. We have a few people who are doing that. Uh, Rachel's working on a series of portraits. Amy, of course, is doing self-portraits. You can always, if you ever run out of subject material, subject matter, you can always photograph yourself. Don't forget that, okay? Let's dive into your work now. So here's what we've got. So Jared, tell us what we're looking at here. Whose is this? All right. And I apologize if you hear a loud banging. It's from people working on my windows. So I'll try and keep it brief and mute myself in between. Uh, so this one is from Antonio. Uh, this photo was taken with a modified infrared uh, camera and changed to black and white. It was taken when the sun was really strong, which is the best time to take inf infrared uh, photos and in that way giving the clouds in the sky a dramatic look uh, this is the main plaza in puebla mexico which was completely empty due to the lockdown that explains because i didn't understand the processing and now i understand it okay okay now i see the infrared okay good well it's a you know it's a technique i have never used and um you know, it's obviously a, a workable way of capturing stuff. I just haven't done it. I haven't used infrared. I don't have a lot to say about it. It's an interesting capture. Black and white works well, really well here. You know, I love the clouds. I love the sun behind the clouds and your, um, the two spires being dominant there. So uh, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, listen, I totally want to encourage you guys to experiment. This is important. You're never going to figure out or find new ways of doing stuff unless you get out there and do it. So good job with that. Jared, thank you. Mark the philosopher. Yeah, I guess I was sort of waxing philosophical there. <laughs> All, right. All right. What's the next This one? is from Jeremy, uh, our photojournalism student. Uh, and oh, he yes. took this at City Hall. Let's see. I'm trying to see if he specified. He said he, uh, photos I took at City Hall yesterday. Um, so there, yesterday. there were a lot that weren't about police. I just want to make that clear that it wasn't like okay. all with police. It, it was a lot of different things. But this was one of the ones I found most interesting. So, you know, a good job on on, you know, bringing these two subjects to the. The, you know, in the foreground and letting the other people in the background and the tree and whatnot blur out. So you use a shallow depth of field there. <clears throat> and um, something's going on, you know, you can see it. 
uh, there's there's some kind of conversation for some reason we don't know why, and you kind of feel that tension there. So you 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 built that, and we have two subjects, but that's what we have. I mean, you're not going to focus on one more than the other. It's not possible. They're both in the same plane, and they're both the what this conversation is about. So. You know, as far as a photojournalistic shot, it definitely it definitely fulfills that quality of telling a story that you were out there capturing. So good. Okay, who's next, Jared? Did I lose you? Okay, I sorry. Didn't hear you. I you. I keep forgetting. Myself. I think they're done working on my window. Okay. Um, so this is from Mark Osborne. Uh, and uh, the one, the caption with this is, there's something enchanting and magical about this woodland scene. I love these colors and textures. I agree. It, it feels like uh, like a little enchanted forest. I, I, I do love the, I love the layers that you've got there and the, the subtle leading lines. You've got this, you know, the, I believe these are aspens, possibly not. No, I don't think so. Anyway, whatever they are, the the two you know that are framing it leads your eye back, and then it, it kind of goes back into the woods there. So you you've got a kind of a, a a very subtle leaning line there, and the the muted fall colors are beautiful. It's that's a great image. Good work. Uh, you also burn the edges. I see. So you know that helps. You don't have to do that every time, but that certainly helps in this case especially with landscapes, keeps your eye going in towards the center of that photograph where where you really have our, you're pulling our eye right there, which is really where it ought to be. And even the lines coming in off of the trees are kind of pointing to it. So you've done a really good job of just keeping it simple in terms of where our eye goes. Even though, okay, I'm not going to say you have to have a punctuation point in every photograph, and this one doesn't need one. I mean, it, it's it's almost like the photograph itself is leading your eye so well that we don't need a punctuation point. So that's a good job. And again, yes, there are no rules, including having to have a punctuation point in every photograph. Okay, All right. Jared. This there one is from. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one is from Paulo, uh, and it is titled "The Never Ending Tunnel," and this was taken in Antwerp, Belgium. Yes, great. You know, hey, listen, black and white works beautifully here. The leading lines are spectacular. You've got a whole bunch of them. You know, it just leads off to infinity, which gives depth of feel or depth perspective rather. Uh, but you've got numerous leading lines. You've got the plates in the middle, you've got the edges, which are another set of lines, and then you've got the side, you know, the curved side, those are leading lines. There's, you know, you could count them all up. There's six or eight of them. And that's all, that's all leading us down this corridor. I, Here's okay. My only thing is, I feel like there's some motion with that bicyclist that would make it a little more interesting. I don't know what it is, but you know, you smell the photograph, and I feel like a few more frames, either forward or backward, you might have, you might have had it. And I'm not sure what it is. It's just my own, just sense that this guy's writing. He's writing away from us looks like yeah so he's writing down there i don't know i mean i i would just look at some of the other frames you know i would be firing away pretty fast because he's moving he's going to move out of that well he'll move farther down you've got him clo fairly close in your foreground but he's going to move away and it might it might even be more interesting as he moves farther away i don't know i i feel like you've got the scene set Keep firing away, keep firing away. And maybe there's a gesture or something that, you know, his arm comes up or who knows, maybe not. But that would be my only feeling that I'm getting from it that I think could be 
make it a little more interesting. But otherwise, very interesting uh, framing and, and use of uh, leading lines. Good job. And definitely black and white is the way to go here. All right. Continuing on the theme of leading lines, we have this one from Rudolph. Um, yeah. This was taken on the outskirts of Prague. He said that since travel is mostly prohibited due to the lockdown, uh, the citizens are happy to go outside to places which under normal conditions would be much less attractive. Then said, I tried to use the power lines for framing slash leading lines. Yeah, and you did. There are definitely leading lines, and it's geometry as well. I'm amazed how much sag there is in those lines. Why do they have them looping down so low? I mean, they're not super low, but... And I'm trying to get your perspective here, where you were, and how did you get yourself in that position? Anyway, that's intriguing. With those lines drooping down like that, they're droopy lines. I don't understand that. Normally, power lines are pretty tight. So there's a story there and something interesting. But, um, you know, the, the curves are, it's a fascinating photograph. It's a, it's, I would call that a photojournalistic or, you know, part of a story of that area. And of course, during the lockdown. So it's good job there. But I am, curious about the big loops in that in those lines why they are drooping down like that i don't understand it and i would be curious to figure out where you are in relationship you're kind of right in the center there and some of those lines are a little actually lower than you which leads me to believe you're are you up on one of these towers possibly it looks like that's the only way you could get that perspective Okay, well, there's some questions there. If you're on the call, please let us know some of those. I'd like to hear a little bit more. All right. Our next one is here, Gary Cook. Uh, he is a new member, first post, AYP Club, so welcome. Uh, and this is part of a project um, that he is doing on life in northeastern Pennsylvania. So he took this back in the fall. Okay, fascinating interest, uh, interesting photograph, because are we looking at two mirrors? I think this is a gas station pump, actually, because that looks like oh, that's where oh, you're getting you're right. that. And there'd be like some kind of something here, but it looks like there's nothing there right now when there should be something there. Oh, I see now. Okay, now that, thank you. So we're looking through like a frame. Okay. Exactly. I, I thought, wow, how do we get two mirrors that work so well together? Now, that's clever. You know, you're using that as a frame. You've got, you know, you got multiple frames and you're shooting, you know, again, a part of a story. So I'd say, hey, keep going on that story. You know, you've got you've got a piece of it right here. And I'd say, keep keep photographing in the in your town and let's see where it develops. You've got that's an interesting photograph because it's. Frames within a frame, car coming through, you know, leading line on the road. Uh, you know, interesting. Yes, there's a gas pump. And uh, boy, your gas is pretty cheap compared to ours. <laughs> California has a lot more taxes. I've just I've just did the math quickly in my head. And it's it's a lot cheaper than ours. We are. I, we haven't seen two dollar gas for a while. Anyway. Um, yeah. Keep going. Keep working on your your story there. But you notice how, just going back to that, you know, you know, there's a lot of material to kind of get interested in in this image. So it, it's it's drawing me in, like it draw me, it drew me in immediately. Like what what is this? And uh, photographs that leave you asking questions. Uh, Bob Holmes talks about don't try to answer everybody's question in a photograph. Let them guess. Let them try to figure it out. Okay, good. So let's see that next one. All right, this is from Spas. I believe that's how you say your name. Um, he said that he took this after uh, his daughter jumped out of bed, crying one afternoon, uh, tried to comfort her, but she was it wasn't really working, so she went and sat by her books, and he immediately recognized this as an opportunity with a good framing. 
Um, but he didn't anticipate that she would lean forward and be lit so sharply. So he was really happy that he managed to capture capture that uh, and react in time to get this image. Beautiful photograph. And, and uh, good on being able to switch your hat from being a comforting dad to a photographer and probably back again. Uh, works really well, yes. The light on her face, the tears. You can see the leftover tears there. And she found her comfort in her books. That's really, that's really gorgeous. I love it. You know, that's just a really great photograph all around. And, and black and white works really well. Yeah, yeah, there's all these great elements. Um, I don't want you guys to think, too, that, you know, <clears throat> photography is about breaking down the image into how come it works or whatever. You know, yeah, we can do that technically. But at the end of the day, it's a communication and, you know, viewers aren't going to sit there and go, oh, yeah, you framed it perfectly and you did this. They're just going to get their feeling from it. And you get a strong feeling from this photograph. And that's really what it's all about. It's like her expression, the lighting, the books, without knowing anything about the story, there's something going on here. And we're, we're, we're witnessing it through your eyes. And that's what photography is all about. Well done. All right. Uh, okay. This next... yeah, I'm just looking oh. at your comment here. I'll just stick it on here too. Why not? So she wasn't having none of the dad, uh, none of the dad me. It was just uh, so I was left free to be a photographer for a bit. Yep. Good job. Yeah, she was, she, in other words, she was just, not even worrying about you as the dad, she was going to take care of this by herself. And you had an opportunity to photograph and you took it. Very good. Excellent. And I like Jared's, Jared's comment that she's not even looking at the camera either, which, you know. I know. Yeah, she's like, dude, <laughs> I'm in my world here. And this is, my, this is what's going to comfort me. No, that's beautiful. It's really a great shot. All right. Excellent. This one is from Partha. A group of farmers are going to work in a field on a foggy winter morning. Farmers are the only people who can grow golden crops in this barren field. This is taken in Bangladesh this year. Wow. I love it. You know, without knowing anything about it, you really get that story. You get the idea that these, I don't know that they're farmers, but they're workers the one in front has some sort of pick or something, it looks like. And they're they're walking along that line, and in the foreground is this golden-colored wheat, I guess it is. No, that's a beautiful photograph. I, I, I think you've got it there. You know, you've got the uh, very warm colors, muted colors in the background of those trees and the line. I love the line that they're walking. You know, they're walking along the road. Great. Good job. All right. This one is from Robin Mitchell. And no caption with it. Dramatic. I love those dramatic and, and moody clouds. And, uh, yeah, look at those clouds. Those are gorgeous. A very dramatic landscape shot. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. You, you know, you obviously you could have gone black and white, but you've got some interesting color in there for sure. And especially the kind of dark blue feeling that you're getting, not just from the sky, but the the rock face as well feels very blue, you know, rather than just black. The clouds are definitely giving it that that blue. And then the white. It's a, you know, it's a beautiful landscape photograph. And you got, you know, you... What you, what you also did was you got the variations in light. Like there's a lot of light on the face here. And there's the light on the ridge way behind it. Yeah. On that far ridge in the background. So you've got some variation, you know, not just the moodiness. It's like Mordor, isn't it? I mean, that's. Yeah. That, that's a <laughs> that's a it's a very Middle Earthy kind of feeling there. So good job. All right, here's one from Jennifer. Uh, this was taken in Australia, where she lives. 
Um, she caught this uh, image in August of last year at a street rally uh, in front of a hotel where the Australian government was imprisoning asylum seekers. Uh, and she said that shortly after taking this photo, the police started moving in and arresting protesters. And so she had to, you know, get out of there because, you know, in the distant past, she used to have, she used to work as a photojournalist and have press credentials, but now she doesn't. So she, wow. that, she doesn't get that protection anymore. You, you couldn't hang on to those? Uh, you know, here in the United States, you can go get a press badge, by the way. You know, most big cities will issue them. Uh, you just have to give them some sort of uh, reason for giving you one, and I have one. I have press plates on my car as well, so you might want to consider just getting a new press badge. Hey, beautiful capture and strong emotion. Here, my only, look, take her or leave it, but I would process it a little differently because my eye is being yanked away from this expression to the building in the background. And uh, it doesn't serve any purpose to do that. It's just kind of like competing. It's pulling my eye away. So I would just process that with a local adjustment on that building. I'd bring it down, just, just bring it down. There's no reason that we have to see that bright, you know, you could, you could easily uh, in Lightroom or Photoshop, put a mask on it, just, just bring the exposure down. At the same time, I'd bring up the high, the, the shadows so we maybe can get a little more out of her face. So I'd bring down the highlights on the background and bring up the shadows with her because you've got a great image. It's a really strong image. It's just a matter of like not having my eye being pulled away and seeing a bit more of her. Does that make sense? Just fairly simple. Um, processing. And while, while I'm at it, Jared and I were just talking about this. Um, for those of you who aren't in AYP Plus, you know, the, the whole way that AYP Plus is designed is to follow the cycle of photography. So there's five steps in photography if you read AYP. You know, first you visualize it, uh, then you get to know your equipment, and then you capture it, which is lighting and composition. Then you edit, process, and then you get it out to the world. There's five steps, and you just go around and around and around, and it's a cycle. It's like a spiral staircase that just keeps going up the more you know about it. So we are following that cycle. In addition to that, we're also covering a few other things like creativity, uh, personal development, a bit of personal development, and... Um, Anyway, so we're going to be covering processing in our next AYP Plus with Doton Sagai. If you guys were around for my interview with him a while ago, you know that he is the master of street photography and processing in black and white. He's going to show us on Tuesday how he processes with Silver Effects Pro. It's an incredible uh, add-on. It's a, you can use it as part of Photoshop or Lightroom or other software in terms of processing black and white. Anyway, those are my comments. Beautiful photograph. If you wouldn't mind, and if you're in AYP, you are in the AYP club, I'm sure. Um, and if you're not in AYP plus, you should join. But I would love to see if you wouldn't mind doing those, those two tweaks on your photograph and putting them back in there. And, uh, Let's just do a comparison, okay? All right. There we go. And Jared, good to see All we're right. on the same page there. It's a, you know, it's a, actually a fairly simple thing to fix. You know, it's just what we do in the dark room. Okay, this one was taken uh, by Senhel, uh, and they captured this at a fish market in Mumbai. Very cool photograph. I mean, that or the stack of orange buckets, and his face, that expression, and you've got light on it, and uh, you know, I, I love it. My okay, I'll give you sort of the same comment. I would bring, I'd bring down the orange a little bit. The I would 
just pull that down only because again it's sort of pulling it keeps pulling my eye away from him do you see what i mean i think if you just put a uh, again put a mask on that on the orange and just brought it down a little bit not a lot you know the thing is with processing it's just like cooking you just tiny little degrees sometimes can make a big difference and it will it'll bring my eye right to him and i might even bring up his shadows just a little bit again these are tiny adjustments so it's just helping the viewer see what you want them to see if you've seen my and if you haven't you guys should watch it my interview with Ansel Adams' son at his house, Ansel Adams' dark room, you'll see how much Ansel got into processing his images. I mean, it was intense. And of course, he wasn't doing it digitally. He wasn't doing it with Photoshop or Lightroom. It was all being done by adjusting the lights in his enlarger and the various techniques that you use in printing and he would take his photographs and draw on the back how he processed that image, how it was exposed, and very complicated. These things, when they came out of the camera, did not look like the final print. And he used a lot of what we call dodging and burning, and it's just still super, super important to remember those tools. Those are the two biggest tools that we use in the darkroom. If you don't know what they are, here's what they are. Dodging means you do something to keep that area from being as dark or as bright as it would be. And it's you, you use a tool. I don't have one here, but you use an object. Usually they're round and you just hold it. You hold the light off of that area. And that's called dodging. And you, you usually use a circular motion so because you, you don't want it to look like you you just you know blocked the light out. So you use a circular motion on that area, and then that dodges the light. That keeps it from being as bright as you as you had it. Burning is just the opposite. You use a a, a piece of paper with a hole cut out. Like if I wanted to burn this guy's face a little bit, I would use that and I would just hold it over there and I get a little more exposure on his face. Yeah, it's so much easier <laughs> in a digital darkroom. We don't have to hold those little tools around and we can undo it at any moment if we mess it up. But those are really, you guys, these are bedrock basic tools of photography that you do not want to forget about because we use them for, I was going to say centuries, but at least a century before digital photography came along, those were just standard tools in your darkroom you used every single day. So don't forget about them. Super important because they're just going to help you tell your story better. Okay. Well, you know, again, when we talk more about uh, processing, we'll we'll get into that. Wow, what a cool shot. Yep. Bam. This one's taken by John. Uh, over in London, uh, sure. one of the archives, and was looking for framing here. Uh, quite happy with the light on the street musician. You nailed it. Oh, uh, that oh is wait, a... we have a. As soon as we're done with that, we have a question about AYP Plus. Okay. Um, well, and how to join. I will put a link uh, yeah. in the chat on how you can get involved with that. So, All anyways, right. go ahead. John, this is cool. This is, you frame that so perfectly, I can't believe it. You know, the guy is right in the window. I love it. It's framing within a frame. There's one, two. Well, there's the photograph, the overall photograph, the car front, the car, two windows. You got like three or four frames going on there. That's awesome. Well done. And, you know, Kazoo. <laughs> is that the name of a cab company, Kazoo? Um, and, and he's got, I'm, I'm curious what he's got, some kind of instrument or gourd, looks like a gourd instrument, but anyway, that's spot on. Well done. You, you, you press that shutter just at the right time. Well done. AYP plus. Yeah. Click that link. 
check it out. There's a little video. And uh, we're, we'll take you on our magical mystery tour, which is going through the cycle of photography and creativity over and over and over. Think of it as a spiral staircase. You know, when you climb up, you end up at the same spot, but you're a higher place. And you just keep spiraling your way up. That's why it's called advancing your photography. There's no end to it. I have, the day you find an end to your advancement of creativity or photography is the day you stop in your, your skills. You're, you're gonna get frozen. Every great photographer I know just keeps moving ahead and that's what we wanna do. Okay, brilliant, John, I love it. All right, this one is from our friend Chicagoland Jared. Uh, he it. took this photo on one of his first trips back uh, to downtown, said he hadn't been there since September, um, and said that there were a couple people and he was able to find a few stories while still being socially distant. Yeah, I mean, you know, I get an instant read on stuff, you know, it's, and then I start talking about what I see, but instantly I went, I, bam, this is a, you know, this one really works because you've got, it's a very interesting photograph on many levels. And there's, again, there's frames within frames here. There's obviously the overall frame, and then we've got this mosaic face which is very yeah that's a fascinating it looks like it's a photograph made into a mosaic and then we've got these two people it's covid time you know so you've got layers yeah so you've got several layers you've got th these you know them in the immediate foreground the mosaic and the next layer uh, the tree layer and the building layer behind them and then even farther behind buildings Lots of interest, lots of texture, um, black and white, I, I believe really helps that. Yeah, good job, Jared, that, that's a good one. Yep, um, practice, practice, practice. Don't forget your tools, good one. Oh, uh, Picture it's a... The, Beth Ann, let's see what you have to say here since you know this photographer. Whoop, what happened to it? Oh, there we go. The picture keeps changing last maybe a minute or so each. Pretty cool. Somebody's knocking on your door. So, yeah, I, I, I think I know what you mean. Is the picture, that picture keeps changing? Or do you mean he keeps processing it differently? I don't know. Maybe you could clarify that. I think anyway, it's the picture that's being displayed. Yeah. Yeah. Which and is there's cool a, that you got that, that one right there. There's a lot going on there. Anyway, that's the... That's a great photograph. Good job. All right. Uh, here's one by our friend Julian Ray uh, and said that he really liked the leading lines in this one and yeah. uh, posted this up at the new year and, you know, was just uh, wanting to remind people of, you know, that we had a new year ahead of us and to make the most of it. Yeah, no, that's 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 a wonderful photograph and the leading lines work super well you're you know you've got the interaction with the uh with the two your two subjects sitting in the train tracks wow you know i don't know if they were doing that or you asked them to do it probably you didn't ask hey would you mind sitting in this train because <laughs> it's kind of a you know not a spot that many of us would feel comfortable so there's a little tension there you know that's built into the photograph which is good Tiny, tiny, tiny point, I would burn, we're talking about burning, okay, burn the edge, that top edge, all the way to the top. Yeah, see how it's brighter? Again, that's going to pull my eye away. You know, we can fix that. I just burn it. Just create a mask, burn that. You can also, there's several ways to do that, by the way, burning your edges. You can use a vignette. Sometimes that works really well. And sometimes it's better to uh, put a mask over it. But just, you know, Bob Holmes made this point. You're responsible for everything in the frame. And that doesn't mean just at the time you press the shutter. It's any time, you know, later on when you're, when you're processing it. 
you can correct these things. That's what's, again, we would have corrected that in the dark room, but it's easy to do. Also, you've got this big bright stripe here of light. I'd bring that, I'd bring down that whole triangular section. If you, Jared, maybe just put your cursor along the edge here where it's bright. Yeah, zoop, there's a triangle there, essentially. Just mask that whole thing out, bring it down. And I would at least match the value, try to match the value of the of the two your two subjects. So if it's all the same value, my eye is going to go to them. I bring them up a little bit, a little bit of shadow. I, I bring that up just so again, it's just clearer. We're not competing with any of this other stuff in the background. OK. Bulb mode, Bill, you got a question here. Let's pick it up here. Why not? Yeah. OK. Hey, Mark, what do you think of analog photography and printing? How does it do in the digital age? Any thoughts on that? I think it's fantastic. And I, I applaud anyone who is doing that. I'm too lazy to go back in the dark room. I've, you heard me say it. I'm just, listen, we don't have any dark. I don't have a dark room in my house. I used to always build a dark room wherever I lived. It's been many years since I built a dark room. It's fun. It's cool. I don't miss breathing chemicals. We had a local community dark room. I'm pretty sure nobody can go there right now. So it's obviously pretty inconvenient right now. But um, it's one of these things where, what can I say? It's like we have vinyl or we have vinyl records. Okay. We have a we built a new collection of vinyl. We got a, a new turntable. But I use it like we use it like one tenth of the time, or a fifth of the time, no, five percent of the time. It's cool though, but it's sort of like you got to get up, got to put on the turn, the record on the turntable, and you got to put the needle in, and then it did it, and it plays through, and then you got to go back and turn it over and do something else, and da da da. da. And we're so spoiled with digital photography and digital audio; it's just terrible. You don't have to do any of that stuff. Digital audio. I control it on my iPhone. You know, I've got a Sonos thing and the speakers play. It's just spoiled us. Same thing with digital photography. But you're never going to... Here's the thing. Why we keep coming back to analog photography is you're never going to capture that out of a digital camera. It's got it. Each roll of film is a little different. Each way you process it is a little different. Just like vinyl, same thing. Even those little scratches, you know, that adds some character to it. It's amazing. It doesn't have to be perfect. Perfection isn't the goal here. It's quality of the communication. Anyway, rambling along, long answer. I think it's a great idea. I would like to motivate myself to get back in the darkroom someday. How's that? All right, let's go back to what we're looking at here. This is a cool photograph. I love it. I yeah. love the, I love the, you know, the framing between the sand and the ocean and the, you know, this leading line of birds. Yeah, and uh, and this is a framed photo. You can't tell because it's it's a white border, but it is framed. Oh, cool. Um, so I believe so that they've actually printed. printed this, which we're always a fan of. Uh, this was taken by J. S. Christian. Sorry if I mispronounced that uh, wrong, uh, but it's called Patience. Ah, good. Yeah, no, I love it. It's it's very clever, and it's got so much great design work going on with it, you know? I mean, I know when you took this photo, you weren't thinking those, and we don't need to think about that kind of stuff. But something caught your eye. You know, the the arcs of the sand, you know, and that whole yeah, that whole leading line of the edge of the of the water, and the and the birds just kind of disappearing off into the distance. That's great. Works really well. Good job. All right, this one is from. Stephen Mike. has gone back to thirty-five millimeter. Well, good, awesome. Mm -hmm. How are you getting yeah. your? Are you are you processing it yourself? Or are you sending it out to a lab? Dan Milner sends his thirty-five 
out to a lab and they scan it. So, you know, most labs do that now, if not all. So you're, you could print it, uh, you know, uh, silver gel and print, you could do, you could get a scan, whatever, you can use it either way. All right, nice portrait. Yep, nice this was portrait. a portrait Mike did of a friend on a work trip to Kansas. Shot it with his Nikon F4. Wow, F4. Wow, okay. Speaking of film here. Yeah, that's a good, that's a really, really works well. You've got, um, I'm going to say a military, you know, it looks like a a jet behind him. Obviously, it's a jet, but I it, he is not flying it. He's not part of that, but somehow I get the feeling he could be. And um, you've burned the edges. You've got him surrounded by this backlighting, which works really well. No, yeah, great photograph. And definitely, you know, it's a black and white because you shot it with black and white film. Excellent. Good job. All right. We'll take a few They're working more. on mine. They're they banging are. on the window, getting it in place. Uh, this one is Those from Those are your Darryl. fans banging on the window. You know, he's playing yeah. it down. They're, they're coming after him. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, this is from Daryl Johnson. Uh, this is... A uh, Kodachrome 64 film simulation that he made. It's a simulation, so that's not actually Kodachrome. You you've got a filter or something uh, in your processing. Yep, that's uh, what it did it a good job. Like. I mean, that and is very this was taken in Portland. Taken in Portland. Okay, very Kodachrome looking image. Uh, Kodachrome is great stuff. It's too bad we can't buy it anymore. Um, <clears throat> But yes, there are a number of different, uh, you know, softwares you can use to emulate that. And that, you know, but as far as the image itself, I see that as part of a story, you know, that's what Dan would call a transitional or linking photograph. If you are telling a story in this town, for instance, in this part of Portland, um, you know, it works really well. And the colors are great. I mean, obviously, because of the, the Kodachrome look, so... It works really well in that regard. Yeah, there's all sorts of various different plugins you can use for your editing software that will emulate film. Some work better uh, than others. <clears throat> all right. This one is from Paulo, who I believe is just joining uh, the AYP Plus. Uh, and this was taken with his phone. Aha. Good one. All right, good long leading lines there, you know, <clears throat> and um, the black and white works really well. I would say, here's the deal. Uh, <clears throat> position of that subject would be better if we caught her a little earlier. She's kind of lumped up against the background there. And if we could have captured her 10 feet before, let's say, or somewhere if she's over to the right we she would stand out because it's a little hard to kind of figure out who she is what she is what's going on so it's just a matter of timing you know and you've got this this is one of these you know where you got the scene set everything's right we just need to get her in a in a position that's going to make more sense from a composition standpoint now the thing about it is there's going to be other people walking along. So if you missed your chance with her, <clears throat> you can wait for the next person and just say to yourself, I'm in the right place. I just haven't smelled the photograph yet. Okay. And then keep pressing the shutter until the photograph comes together. Sometimes it's just, there's just that one thing. Her legs are you know, apart a little bit more or something, and all of a sudden it all comes together. But that, that, that's just it. That's a matter of just timing and hanging around until you see it. Okay, we've got all time right. for a few more. Here's one from Wayne. 
Uh, this is another photo from his trip to Texas that he took. Uh, and this is his niece. Instead of going to watch her brother in Kung Fu class, she had to stay behind and play some ball. <laughs> Great photograph. Another, you know, you've got you got some attitude there, but it's not a, you know, it's not a pouty kind of thing. It's just she's, uh, you know, she's she's got that, that there's a look, you know, and it's got the she's got, she's the got bat. spirit. Yeah, it's got spirit there. So that's that's really that works really well. And you know, leading lines, black and white. She's in the foreground, stuff trailing off in the background. Tiny little thing. I just bring down the high highlights a little bit in the background, just again, so it doesn't pull pulls my eye a little bit. You could just adjust that really easily. Just a little masking over the sky there. Just bring down the values there. You know, it's, you might want to just, again, this is a great photograph, so it's just an easy, easy thing to do. But just add that to your processing. You know, after you've kind of got everything, like maybe you adjust this and that, and you're adjusting the blacks. And I always kind of follow, you know, formula. I adjust the blacks. I adjust the whites. I'll usually clarity, blah, 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 blah. You know, and then, you know, I might crop it a little bit or whatever. But put in there as part of your your checklist, okay, is anything pulling my eye out of the subject? Let's just adjust that. You know, just put that in your your checklist and it, it'll just tweak it out tweak it out a little bit. Anyway, it's a great photograph. I love her mood, I love her attitude. Black and white works really well. Leading lines, boom. Good job. All right. Uh, we've got this one by Ram. Uh, morning run. Oh, cool. Okay, so wow. Intense light getting out in the morning is very commendable. I am a morning person, but it's hard to get me out super early to photograph. I'm better at the golden hour at the end of the day than I am at the beginning of the day. And uh, anyway, so that's that's a great point in your favor. I love the reflection off the water. And um, so what we have here is two subjects. I'm just looking at them. We have two subjects. One, I guess they're both running, huh? The one in the back for sure is running. I, I was thinking the guy in the front is walking. Um, I, I'm going to just give you the same comment. I I just keep firing away. I, I feel like there's a position for them. You know, again, it's you smell the photograph. I just feel like a, some more frames. Somewhere it would go bang. Maybe as they're running into the frame some more. So that they're uh, against the reflection they would stand out more they'd be backlit and you know i think that's where your photograph is just let them run into the frame think of yourself as a movie director where you've got this you got the scene set right and you know you call action but maybe your actor doesn't really move into position just yet so you let them move into your position, but meanwhile you're you're firing away the whole time. So that I, I just feel like that's that's what's going on here. Do you agree with me or not? I mean, I'm I'm just giving you my opinions. You can throw them out the window if you want, but we're talking about advancing your photography. So I think that you would advance this photograph by letting the subjects be backlit and standing out a little bit more against the water. Okay, let's take a couple of more and we're going to right. call it a day. All right, this one is from Kevin. Uh, and the comment with this one is, this was taken January 3rd, Rural Roadscape in Michigan. I love it. You know, it's a very subtle <clears throat> uh, color photograph. You didn't make it a black and white. I... I get it. I see why you did, because there's just the subtlety of the color in it uh, works. And the, it, it's like a painting. It, 
it has a very soft feeling because of all the snow. And of course, you know, the geometry of the trees, your main tree in the, you know, in the, in the subject there. And there's a little tree in the foreground and trees in the background, but it's, it's very much a, a painterly feeling that I get out of that of winter. So good one. All right. We'll take what one or two more. All right. Uh, we've got an interesting one here. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pull up uh, the specific post one second. Okay. So uh, Ellen uh, wrote about uh, both these images and wanted to know which one we thought worked better. Um, and if the second one worked as a standalone. So we have this image. Let me get rid of me And here. this image. Okay. <clears throat> Let's you can go move back over to the... the far right-hand side. Oh, yeah. There if you want. Things. There's a space over there. Okay. So this is image one. Uh-huh. And this is image two. And she kind of wanted to know if which one you thought might be better. And, if, and in particular, if this one could be a standalone image, you think. I don't see it that way. I see it as part of a series, and um, you know, I, 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 you're in a spot uh, where you're, you know, you're photographing these singers, and I see them as a sequence. I mean, that's just kind of the way they look to me. Go back to the other one again. Just there we go. Yeah, I see it as a series. I don't quite see one yet. I mean, of the two, I don't. I, if I were going to pick one as a standalone, I'd pick this one. But um, I, I see it as part of a series. And uh, if you're, you know, that was your intent to go, and I assume it is because you've got at least two in the series. You know, keep going with that. Just keep photographing. The, you know, you've got this um, singing scene here. You know, just keep firing away and let's just see where it goes. So there you go. Okay, Jared, one last one, and we're going to call it a day. Well, I think we've gone through all the photos that I had. We've uh, gone through them today. all. Well, okay, that's great. That's fine. So I'm listen, you guys. Yeah. What was that? I was just going to say, if there's any that uh, I did miss, I'll be going through again uh, over this week, or if you just put in one, um, we'll be saving them for next week. So be sure to come back next week to uh, uh, to see your photo talked about. Yeah, and we're gonna keep we're gonna keep this on uh, Thursday. It's not gonna switch around. We kind of you know, whatever. It's so if you guys would tell your friends, uh, I don't know where else you get this kind of critiquing like this. So tell your friends, bring them along, pass the word out. <laughs> it's uh, you know, critiquing is really important, just to have some other eyeballs on your photographs and get some feedback, right? It's really valuable, I believe. I hope you guys agree too. Uh, join us in AYP Plus. As I said, Doton Sagai, you're gonna learn some really cool points about converting to black and white. You are going to love this. You'll never wanna do it any other way, I guarantee it. So that's gonna be this Tuesday at 10 a.m. on AYP Plus. We already have the link in there. And um, I'm working on some other shows, some other interviews, and that sort of thing coming up. So stay tuned. I don't have an announcement just yet, um, but you'll hear about them. Okay, well, listen, always a pleasure to see you guys from all over the world. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate it. I really love it. Don't forget to subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss anything leave your comments leave your likes share these videos and say it with me remember to get out and capture your own images of life stay well you guys and we'll see you really soon take care mm -hmm.